Good morning. Uh, and, and thank you for inviting me to present today. Uh, I'll start with, I'm Myrna Bittner. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Run With It Synthetics. We're a company based out of Western Canada. So it's super early for us here, but really excited to join. Um, and uh, and the project that I'm gonna share with you today is an application of our synthetics platform um, in which we created a regional advanced lab uh, for projects that, uh, and I'll go into some examples uh, that the themed and topics that it was being used for it's really what we consider to be a, a convergence of people, place, and scenario-based intelligence. And uh, and this is why we exist or, or why it was called into play in that the city and region, so there was 14 connected uh, and collaborative municipalities and rural regions in an area. They were looking for a way to be able to understand how to invest in in futures that were uh, human centric, so a different way of looking at planning. They were looking also at ways to make invisible populations and interconnections between their economies and their land base and their um, planning departments uh, visible. They were looking to coordinate economics as well, so different economic initiatives, different industry um, collaborations, transportation and logistics. And they were finding that data was a, a really big problem, that it was siloed not only within their own uh, regional centers, but also across boundaries and existed in different formats or even sometimes didn't exist at all, as well as was privacy protected. Uh, so this is what our synthetics platform, um, how they engaged with us was really to be able to create this living model of their uh, city and their regions together. So their people, their policy and technology and infrastructure, and then be able to inflect or see different aspects of that under different conditions today, as well as uh, in the future. And uh, when we first started, um, this was on the basis of some of work that had been done uh, leading up to that, which had involved a lot of work in looking at uh, the impact of a new hydrogen economy. So it's an energy dense center, as well as looking at the future growth in the region. So some really elaborate and uh, and real growth plans that enable them to see you know, the future of the region, but also look at it from some different perspectives. And we called it a regional uh, Edmonton Advanced Laboratory. So again, a uh, very diverse community of leaders uh, that got together in October of 2023 to use this platform and to be able to consider some what if circumstances and scenarios from around the world that they wanted to see in their community and uh, explore those together. So leaders from health, economics, uh, urban planning, growth, government, so municipal governments, as well as industry, uh, charitable organizations, uh, they all became subscribers of this. They wanted to be able to augment the data that existed today. They wanted to be able to look forward, so be able to generate new data um, from circumstances that hadn't happened or from research from elsewhere, and then be able to see that in their communities uh, over time. So focus, again, on, on sharing through visualization. One of the ways that uh, in this synthetics platform that we bring this to life or we're able to manipulate and inflect circumstances is through an agent-based uh, at-scale modeling simulation platform. So to be able to synthesize an entire population and have this population then uh, interpret, learn, react, respond to the circumstances in which we were presenting them. So those circumstances could be um, they could be new developments, new residences, new types of density, new building envelopes, zoning, transportation, economic conditions, even environmental and health. And we do this really specifically. So when we sandbox uh, new regions or planned areas of growth, we can do so right down to the household and then populate them with synthetic individuals um, to see how they react or respond. Um, this is an example of what that looks like and what those communities were seeing. Um, so in the middle is the the holodeck or the visualization layer in which they it's a living data layer so they can actually paint, interpret, graph uh, over time. And again, um, began with looking at even the density of the community as it changes over time. Was that suitable for the amount of population growth? What types of land did it consume? And, and how did those consumers exist in that, that new landscape? So where were they living? How were they living? What were their living patterns? 
um, requiring in terms of consumption. Um, this led to some really interesting uh, new perspectives for the community in terms of how they could see the community and, and lay out targets or goals for what a successful population would look like. And then they could examine it through the lens of all of the things that were usually incorporated in, in land use planning, um, but also that are incorporated now and can be seen from the perspective of, you know, do they have the appropriate recreation areas? Are they, do people who are living there have access um, to nature, nurture, health, mobility? Um, and so in this environment, we were looking at interplay. So uh, trying to understand, given that we could synthesize the housing, um, the consumption patterns, even the health of the individuals who would be living there, um, what this interplay gave them access to. So now um, I'll walk you through three of the use cases where we actually brought all of this data and information together and dialed forward circumstances for their consideration. Um, one being uh, a primary topic was about energy futures. So being able to look at and understand not only the energy consumption and look at the emissions today, but to dial forward and look at the new uh, plans that were built, um, you know, or planning on being built, growth, density, where in certain areas and how, and uh, be able to assess uh, what that meant for even things like um, energy burden, um, electrification, HVAC, depending on the dwelling types where those differences come from. So where in very particular regions, um, the differences uh, come from in terms of dwelling or housing types um, that they are pursuing as a part of their growth plan. And then also not only being able to see uniquely today, um, how those are contributing or play a role in energy burden for people who are vulnerable, because we can introduce health attributes into the synthetic population, but also dial forward and look at uh, projections. Uh, projections for energy prices, economics, um, inflation rates, and understand vulnerability um, as we see it in the future. So another uh, topic or area of concern was around youth futures uh, in this population. So to be able to look at the future of youth, how it's different than today, and then to be able to inflect um, different aspects of youth futures that uh, that change their sense of belonging. Sense of belonging was identified as something that was very important to the economics of the region. And so we could also take data out of this environment um, where we look at youth futures and investing in specific programs around environmental, social um, policies and, uh, and, and even economics understand how that youth sense of belonging in the psychographics of the youth um, would lead to different graduation rates, and then how those graduation rates could lead to different outcomes in the community um, for those youth, as well as intergenerational poverty in their families. Um, so really performed some interesting um, dial forwards when it came to social planning um, in this environment. And then the last topic um, that we investigated with the community is really around uh, the impacts of of air quality. So um, wildfire and emissions uh, is of great concern to this area. We're in Western Canada and we already have um, just a dramatic increase in smoke days and air quality, which is uniquely impacted by PM 2.5. And so in this environment, again, we're able to dial forward the uh, and see not only where the most vulnerable live, how that relates to the building envelope, indoor air quality, access to technology um, in those homes to be able to inflect air quality um, now, today and in the future, and then quantify the difference that that makes uh, for policymakers. Uh, and uh, and also when it comes to, you know, how that relates to existing sensors in the region, how those sensors are used and how then who they inform, such as uh, school and school children. These environments have been used uh, now. The same uh, model of 14 communities has been used for a variety of engagements. So looking at everything from um, economics, again, around uh, investment support, even for hydrogen economy, growth planning, looking at the future post-secondary education where students live, affordable housing. Um, these are just some examples. A lot of work in, in decentralized energy and energy planning and more and more work now in, in mapping those things to healthy communities, so vulnerable population and assessing risk. 
Um, the environments themselves produce a massive amount of data for consumption. This data, again, is consumed in a variety of different ways. Um, people who use data and consume data today can consume now synthetic data from that's temporally produced across different uh, assumptions and forecasts in these communities. But they can also really uh, use these environments for very strategic uh, focuses. And then just for the technical amongst you, this is what um, the, the data tool set looks like for those behind the scenes who are creating these scenarios and mapping these scenarios and, and some of the um, examples of the interface for the desktop for what we call the, the data DJs who are spinning these futures forward. Thank you. And the next question for yourself, please, is for impressive work and absolutely superb graphics. Hats off to you. What you did not comment on a lot was how to connect all these sources together in the back end. Can you comment on that too, please? Sure. So um, we see synthetic twins and our modeling platform as being an uh, interconnected uh, modeling platform. So uh, we can add or incorporate the models of other uh, subject matter experts. We can develop models um, from research. Uh, and we can, and, and those all operate in the back end as explainable or manipulatable uh, modeling objects that attach to a synthetic population and the configuration of scenarios. So what's in the back end is, uh, is uh, what we call an I2SI uh, reactor a framework that runs these models in an interconnected way um, and allows us to manipulate time as well as configure, um, change, shift, uh, even visually uh, change some of the distributions if we want to see different forecasts. So that, that runs in the back end. Very good. And the next question for yourself again, which you've been part of already answered, but to continue asking the question is what is the underlying technology platform do you embrace open principles uh the underlying technology platform is a uh, long-term uh, development and like i say it's a it's a extensive modeling and synthetic entities uh, simulation platform um, that was developed by myself and my company uh, and uh, but it is it is designed to be open. So we see the future of this digital twin and synthetic twin modeling universe as being um, something where we connect and and use APIs um, to connect and share uh, models from other experts and uh, and and in a modeling universe where those models will be shared. Uh, fit for purpose, um, you know, and and used and consumed and returned, um, you know, uh, across the world and across sectors. And that's what we have been working towards. In fact, we've done some assignments like that where um, expert agencies have used the platform together, um, shared their data and modeling uh, environments. We've interconnected them and then they have accomplished their scenarios and we've returned them um, their data and models as well. 